This is a chicken and egg challenge. How will you get your first job? No experience. Without experience, how do you get your first job? Well, we have faced it. You, and when you are, even, even to get the job, you need experience and you need the certifications. Without the certifications, you won't get the job, you won't get the experience. Without the experience, no one will give you a job. But a lot of us have navigated through it, and I would suggest the first thing you need to get your job is passion. Hi, I'm pleased to take you on this short journey on starting a career in information security. Let's take a look a bit at the threat landscape. So in 2017, we all know what happened to the NHS. It was attacked with ransomware, the WannaCry ransomware, and the NHS lost over 92 million. Until someone is affected, these things sound like fairy tales. When the NHS hack happened, patients could not get their treatments, appointments were cancelled, and it could have led to some fatalities. Perhaps you may have been affected yourself. You couldn't go to the GP. Someone you love could not either because of an attack, ransomware attack on the NHS. We saw Maersk, the shipping giant, that same year. Although Maersk was not directly attacked, but a lot of containers could not get to their destinations because they couldn't access the computers. I understand that trucks were lined up for miles. That could have affected critical supplies in our supermarkets. That was not all. We also had the Natanz, Iran. Nuclear facility was attacked in 2010 by the famous Stuxnet, believed to have been a work of some nation state actors. Yeah, nation states are also involved. Several centrifuges were burned, and we understand that even that malware today is a weapon of mass destruction. It can be customized for several purposes, sinister purposes. And you know what happens? You can't attribute these attacks to any specific person, organization, or country. You can easily deny it. BA recently was fined by the Information Commissioner because they did not keep the uh, data of customers securely, leading to a security breach. Now, imagine that you apply for a mortgage just at the point of getting a new house and you're told you got a debt on a certain credit card or a loan you didn't pay back and you had no knowledge of it, only to discover that someone stole your identity from a hack such as the, the British Airways one, and that led to you losing that mortgage. Very easy for it to affect our daily lives. Hacking, information security affects us all. Very recently, in February 2021, the Florida uh, water plant was attacked. The intention was to increase the quantity of sodium hydroxide that goes into the water, potentially wiping out the whole of Florida. But it was detected. Imagine if that was not detected. You just go to the tap, get water and drink, and you do not even think for one moment that something could be wrong with the concentration of that water that could potentially harm you. This is what we are up against. And since this affects us all, if you're thinking of a career in information security, you're making the right decision. My name is Ewere Arohen, and I'll be taking you on this short journey on a career in information security. Great. A bit about me. 
I hold a bachelor's degree in computer science, a master's degree in information security and computer forensics. For 20 years now, I've been into IT and 10 years out of it has been actually in information security. I've worked in several UK critical national infrastructures doing information security. Uh, currently work as a threat modeler for the Lloyds Banking Group. I've worked for a number of other banks as well. I hold a couple of industry certifications. Security Plus, the CISSP, CCSP, CISA, CISM, SAPSA, Certified Ethical Hacker, Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator, the SANS uh, GCI, HGCF, and a number of others I have not bothered to put in. Yeah, I work hard at upscaling, and I'll be telling you a bit more about that as we progress. So, the question, what is information security? Oh, you may have been hearing several terms, information security, cyber security, uh, computer security. What do they all mean? Well, information security looks at the protection of the confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of critical assets. The services that, are, that the organization renders to ensure that it's available when needed, to ensure that when you send a hundred pounds or a thousand pounds out of your account, it is a thousand and it's not ten thousand. That's integrity and confidentiality that it's not disclosed to who doesn't have a need to know. Imagine spending billions on uh, research in the, into coronavirus vaccine and just as you're about to release it, somebody else, another organization from another country just releases the same vaccine and patents it. And all your R&D just goes down the drain. So confidentiality is critical, even in military settings, national security, everywhere. So these are the three um, foundations of information security. And um, there are also some other attributes that we look at when it comes to information security, such as authentication, authenticity, uh, auditing, accounting, non-repudiation, authorization, all these come into play as well. Now, you may have been hearing me talk about information security. And you're wondering, but what, what, what about cyber security? Yeah, information security looks at the whole broad spectrum whereas cyber security is a subset of information security. Now, information security will deal with the physical layout of where data is stored, where we have our critical assets. It will look at our policies, our procedures, the people, the process, and the technology. It will look at everything, whereas cyber security is a bit more narrow. It will look only at computers that are connected in cyberspace. So it will look at interactions using the protocols over the, the internet. That's where cybersecurity differs from information security. And computer security you would also hear of is a subset of cybersecurity because there are some computers that will not participate in cyberspace. They are air gapped, like the one that happened in Iran, the, the, the Natanz attack I just talked about with Stuxnet. The computers were air gapped and had no connection to the internet. Typically, what, what happens is a USB stick is loaded with malware and in the hope that it will be plugged into those systems, and that's how it works. So, such cases where the computer has no connection to the internet or it's just separate that refers to computer security but once we talk about interconnected systems that's cyber security in information security we see several branches or several areas of specialization network security cloud security governance risk and compliance infrastructure security and application security, you might have a few, one or two more areas, uh, a few more areas that add up uh, 
the categorizations continue, but these are the key ones that we know today. Now, as we practice, as we as information security evolves, we've seen a number of job practice areas. Risk, security and risk management, asset security, uh, security architecture and, the, and engineering, security operations, security assessment and testing, that's where penetration testing comes, vulnerability testing, uh, comes digital forensics, incident response, cryptography, uh, software development security. We look at security at design of, of the software and then application security when it is running. So from coding to when it's live, all that is uh, comes into view. So they're all practice here. There's identity and access management, data loss prevention, several areas of practice in information security. At the moment, it would be recommended to start from the basics, which we will talk about shortly. But you, you get to find this out as you develop your, uh, in your career, which area specifically you would like to focus on your area of strength, probably looking at your background and um, what you're passionate about, what you seem to enjoy doing. There are several rules that we see in information security. Some are cyber security technicians or information security technicians, cyber crime analyst, incident responder, IT auditor, forensic investigator, quite linked to somehow to the previous slide we talked about the job practice areas. You have cyber security engineers, cyber security architects, Threat Intelligence Analyst, Chief Information Security Officer, Security Manager, Senior Security Manager. All these are roles we see in job adverts and uh, typically mapped to certain skill sets in information security. Sure enough, you will have to get trained. And um, if you have watched the previous or uh, one of the videos on how to get into a career in computer science yes that is important um, you strictly wouldn't need to have a degree in computer science to get into cyber security or information security you would usually need a degree in stem science technology engineering and mathematics but what i've seen generally is that if you're passionate about it and you develop yourself, not much will be tied to your first degree. So don't let that discourage you. Besides, information security, the part of risk management and governance, risk and, and compliance, doesn't really require a degree in STEM. More something around the management area because it's more management management oriented. So don't let that discourage you if you do not have a degree in STEM. Even if you don't have a degree, I would say you just need the passion. The passion. It's only now that some schools have started to offer degrees in cyber security. Before now, you just have to have a degree somewhere in computer science computer engineering, and then transition while on the job with certifications and experience into cyber security or information security. So, typically, where, we, where I would recommend and we do in the industry is to start with the CompTIA Security Plus to lay the foundation for information security so you know exactly the depth and the breadth of information security. And at the end of that certification training, you have a pretty good knowledge of what information security is. And you'll be able to narrow your skills or your training down one part. Is it security operations? You will then progress with CISA Plus. Do you want to go into the area of compliance and risk? Then the CASP is the way to go. If you find that 
hacking is your thing, certified ethical hacker, licensed penetration tester, SANS incident handler. A number of these, these certifications are put on the screen here. What a review. I'll put descriptions to them, the websites, to their certifying bodies in the description to this video. Please check out for it. So yes, you need to train and train and train. And when you're done, typically what we see is a challenge of the, is the chicken and egg challenge. How will you get your first job? No experience. Without experience, how do you get your first job? Well, we have faced it. You, and when you are, even, even to get the job, you need experience and you need the certifications. Without these certifications, you won't get the job, you won't get the experience. Without the experience, no one will give you a job. But a lot of us have navigated through it and I would suggest first thing you need to get your job is passion. Give yourself to training and retraining and retraining because the field of information security is changing. Every, well, a few years ago, we were just getting to understand virtualization and how that technology plays out. And then the cloud. Was it trying to understand the cloud? The cloud is Yes, today we hear about the fog, not just cloud alone. There is fog now, and we're trying to get our, ourselves up to speed on how these technologies really work. There is the Google Cloud, there is the Microsoft Azure, there is AWS with all their security concerns. There is uh, Alibaba, there is Oracle. It's just growing, and the learning never ends. You must be one who is passionate about learning and can give himself to learning. Yeah, that's important. Find somewhere to volunteer. Perhaps the job you're doing, there is the security function or there are, there are certain security areas that you could help in with your training, with the learning you've been doing. Get involved. Volunteer. Is it um, an NGO or a charity? Volunteer. Be a security person for free, and that experience you can put on your CV. Get the security certifications. Begin with the Security Plus. Indeed, get that certification. Put it on your CV. Put it on your LinkedIn profile. Get mentoring. Sometimes, in my career, I've noticed that if I had a mentor earlier on, my success would have been faster. I would have been more directed in my learning. For instance, I ventured fully into computer forensics. I really wanted to hunt down the bad guys. And after I had training, master's degree in computer forensics, the certified computer hacking forensic investigator, and the SANS advanced forensics course, I realized I was struggling to really understand what I was up against. Then I realized, if you don't know how the threat actors operate, their tools, their techniques, their tactics, their procedures, you wouldn't even know what you should be searching for. I had to step back to go learn about hacker tools, techniques, and then I got the credentials of the certified ethical hacker and the jack certified incident handler. If I had done mentoring, I should have taken those ones first before the forensic ones. But I have no regrets today, although the journey has been long for me. So get a mentor, someone who can point you in the right direction. Be prepared to accept a salary or a daily rate if you're a contractor that's much lower than the going rate. That's how a company might give you the option, let's try him out, and that necessary experience that you need, you could just step into it. Now, in this job, competence is critical. You must be competent. Get a personal lab. Get hands-on. 
Whatever it is you are learning, ensure that you know it and you really know it. Get a personal lab. Build your personal lab and do this thing. Know it thoroughly. Follow the InfoSec news. There are a couple of uh, Cyberwire and um, the Sans Daily Sans Broadcast. Uh, Tomcast, they call it, by Johannes Ulrich. I listen to those two virtually every day to know what's happening in the industry. Read, like, um, register, the register.co.uk for daily cyber security news, information security news, and what's happening. IT Pro, there are a couple of them. Just know what's happening. Be up to date. Get your CV professionally written, professionally reviewed. Get a good LinkedIn profile and network with people. Join different forums and be active. Link up with people who have gone ahead of you. And then do your search with a good job board. I use JobServe. I would say JobServe is pretty much what you would need. There are some other good ones. CW Jobs, Total Jobs, I think they've both merged now. And then um, there is job site, there is CV library. Yeah, job service is good. That's what I use. I would say don't throw your CV on too many of them, but just focus on a few. There are some that are specific to cyber security or, info or IT, like job serve. Find them and apply. Get a good CV and put those applications out. Now, get job interview training. You've got an interview, speak to someone, please interview me. There are some courses on interviewing. Go through them and get your interview skills right so that you don't uh, mess up that interview just because you didn't know how to comport yourself or do well in an interview despite your being good for the job. Some people miss it just because they interview poorly. So get those skills and that will be a stepping stone for you. So there are a few other, other organizations that you might need to or sources of learning. Um, we know that these things cost a lot of money. For instance, a Sans credential could be up to £5,000. There are also some other free options. Even SANS does offer some free options. Get on their website, see what options they have got. There are MOOCs, edX, Coursera, FutureLearn, totally have virtually free. Although you need to pay for their certificate, what you, what you need is the learning if finance is an issue. Udacity does offer a number of scholarships. Get there. Microsoft Learn, Cybrary, Plural Site, LinkedIn Learning, A Cloud Guru. A Cloud Guru has just bought over uh, Linux Academy and their focus is on cloud, cloud architecture, cloud security, everything about cloud. EC Council, get on their website. We we'll put the link down there for you and see what offerings they have. And get on the ones that are free, learn, augment, and pay for the ones that you can pay for. But whatever you do, keep learning. I'm sure that if you follow these tips, in no sooner time, you will get a job, the kind of job that you want in information security. It's been my pleasure taking you through. And um, if you have any questions, happy to answer. And feel free to link up with me on LinkedIn. And thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for viewing this video. Thank you.